here wearing the martyr's red and thinking about the life of teacher, preacher, activist, visionary, and martyr, Martin Luther King Jr. This week, I began to wonder, how did Dr. King manage to function day after day, year after year, amidst real uncertainty and serious danger? That's my question. Did he fear for his own safety and the safety of his family? And if so, to what degree? And how did he avoid feeling paralyzed by that fear? How did he manage to keep making brave choices under the constant threat of death? How did he arm himself against so much danger? Because the threats were real, Police arrested King 29 times, often during marches, but once for driving 30 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. Hate mail, constant, phone threats, also constant, and a would-be assassination attempt before this successful attempt, ending his short life at age 39. So what did Dr. King make of all this danger? He's a saint in our church, and I want to know how did he do it? What is the message for us, this ability that he had to make brave choices in the midst of danger? How can we then make brave choices too? A scholar at the University of San Francisco was writing about this recently, and she noticed how the speeches that he was writing to churches in the late 50s and early 60s were very much adopting the style of St. Paul, and we hear Paul's letters every Sunday here in church, Paul encouraging and criticizing, Paul praising and admonishing the little church startups, the fledgling communities he had inspired. And in his speeches, King did the same, but he was focusing on the whole institution of Christianity in America and probably Judaism as well. And one passage stands out for me this morning because King is riffing on the beautiful words that you heard Femi just read in Paul's letter to the church in Ephesia. First, Paul's letter. It's stunning. One of my favorites in the New Testament and picking up on beautiful metaphors from the Old Testament, Paul tells the Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God. And later he says, take up the whole armor of God. He says, stand firm and belt your waist with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness Lace your sandals in preparation for the gospel of peace. Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. These incredible images just create this sense of, of each of us absolutely glowing in holy protection and strength. And Paul, a prisoner himself in Rome at that time, ends the letter by describing himself as an ambassador in chains. And I am sure that Martin Luther King Jr. identified with Paul. Like Paul, King knew about living a life of danger and he knew what it was like to be in prison. And so King preached his own letter to the churches. And here's something that he said in his letter to the churches. May I just say a word to those of you who are struggling against this evil of racial injustice. Always be sure that you struggle with Christian methods and Christian weapons. Never succumb to the temptation of becoming bitter, 
And as you press on for justice, be sure to move with dignity and discipline using only the weapons of love. Let no man pull you so low as to hate him. Always avoid violence. If you succumb to the temptation of violence in your struggle, unborn generations will be the recipients of a long and desolate night of bitterness, and your chief legacy for the future will be an endless reign of meaningless chaos. King pressed for justice in ways that, that ring out in that letter, fighting for black Americans' right to vote, for deseg desegregation, labor rights, the adoption of the Civil Rights Act, an end to the war in Vietnam, and so many, many more things. Engaging in spiritual, not physical warfare, King fought for the very soul of America. And in 1964, when he won the Nobel Peace Prize, youngest person ever to win it at that point, he talked about believing that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. He said, this is why right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. And I imagine King during those years, the, the, the late 50s into the early and mid 60s, following Paul's mystical instructions, wrapping himself in that glowing, holy set of weapons and garments of spiritual warfare, that breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, this, in spite, again, of receiving those daily death threats, phone calls, floods of anonymous hate mail, and news of constant plots against him. Interviewed in 1965 by Alex Haley, King spoke about fear. He said, if I were constantly worried about death, I couldn't function. After a while, if your life is more or less constantly in peril, you come to a point where you accept the possibility philosophically. Because America today, he said, is an extremely sick nation, and something could well happen to me at any time. And he ends those comments to Alex Haley with these brave words. I feel, though, that my cause is so right, so moral, that if I should lose my life, in some way, it would aid the cause. He used the danger that he faced, including his times in jail, as an opportunity to wake up the public, wake up the American people. He made facing personal danger count for something. And the classic example is his famous 1964 letter from Birmingham jail. And that's when he took on the Birmingham Christian and Jewish communities, the leaders of which had written an open letter complaining about the march on Birmingham and complaining about him as a leader. And so, his writing, the letter from Birmingham jail, was his answer to them, and then it went on to reach a global audience down through the years. And yet, this battle for the soul of America, armed only with spiritual weapons, seemed at times to take a toll. I think King grew weary. Who wouldn't? And by 1968, the year he would be assassinated, he reflected. Frankly, I'm tired of marching. I'm tired of going to jail. I feel discouraged every now and then and feel my work is in vain. 
But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. And I'm amazed that King so seldom lost heart. Think about our own lives and how easy it is for us to become discouraged, especially in times like these, times of war and times of meaningless chaos. What can we learn from the life of Martin Luther King Jr.? As Paul says, to put on the whole armor of God. Those beautiful words, those stunning words, those images again of helmet and shield and sword to become warriors of peace. That crazy and daunting contradiction because spiritual armor does not keep us physically safe. This morning, I've been talking about all the ways in which Martin Luther King Jr. was never physically safe. So what then, how is it that we are protected? This past Friday in my fifth grade religion class, somehow or other we got onto the topic of mortality. And one student had an epiphany and he said wonderingly, every minute we're closer to death. Every second we're dying. And you could tell that this had never crossed his mind before. And then he paused and looked around the classroom and then as if a lightning bolt hit him, he said, but right now we're alive. <laughs> <laughs> and I could tell that for him, this was an, also an epiphany, a deeper realization that he could embrace life more fully, knowing that it wasn't forever, the human life anyway. And he's on to something. Right now, we are alive, praise God. And we can use this time now to join in this cosmic battle playing out in our lives between good and evil. Paul writes that we are fighting against powers earthly and beyond, against the rulers and the authorities, and that means everything from institutionalized racism to violence to war, all the injustices on earth. And, Paul goes on, we're fighting against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Spiritual forces that Paul would say are filtering down to earth. Wherever evil comes from, we see it in the world around us. We see how it infects and contracts the human heart. And like Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and with the help, always the help of the Holy Spirit, we can choose to become warriors of goodness and peace in the face of it, in spite of the danger, armed with the whole armor of God, Feel this armor you can wear. Amen.